So there you have it, guys. Let's recap. And I put the five up first. I'm struggling. All right, welcome to another episode of Mortgages and Mixology. Today, I want to tell you about five alternatives to down payment assistance. So as many of you are aware, the down payment assistance programs uh, got suspended. This happened a few years back. I do think the assistance will come back, but I think it's important that we talk about other options that you can have in case the assistance programs are not available. There weren't these types of assistance programs available for a long time. And so today I wanna to share with you some ideas on what we can do to either help you with the down payment or um, some alternatives as well. The first one is, uh, if you are employed, most employers have some sort of 401k plan. You may or may not have signed up for this when you first got going. I know with my very first employer, uh, I was working, um, they had an opportunity where a portion of my check went into this 401k every single month, and it just slowly built, it's being invested, and, and that's money that's available for you to use, typically for retirement or the purpose of those funds. But if you're purchasing a home right now, you can use the funds in that account to help buy a home. Now, there might be tax ramifications to this. You're gonna to wanna to talk with a tax advisor. That's, that's not me. There's two ways you can utilize that money for your down payment. One, you can take an early withdrawal. Again, there's gonna be penalties associated with that um, in most cases, but it's money you can use, and I promise you the equity you're gonna earn by putting it as a down payment in a house a few years later is gonna more than pay for itself and you can always you know, put that money right back in. The other option is some companies offer 401k loans. Now the cool thing about 401k loans, is, cause I know you're thinking, no, no, don't take out any more debt. In this case, it's okay. Because when you're borrowing money against your own money, which is really what a 401k loan is, um, we don't have to count that monthly payment as part of your debt to income ratio. So obviously they're gonna deduct that from your paycheck every week or every two weeks or however your employer works. You could utilize a loan out of your 401k to pay for the down payment. As many of you know, minimum down payment requirements for most programs are either 3% for conventional as a first time home buyer or 3.5% down for FHA as a really any buyer as long as it's your primary residence. Long story short, 401k is a great option to use money Put that towards your down payment. I guarantee your 401k is not bringing you a 20 to 25% return on its money every year. Whereas appreciation right now, guess what? That's what it was last year in, in uh, Phoenix, 20%. 401k, great use of funds to help for the down payment. The second way that you can get additional funds to use towards your down payment is a gift. Gifts are allowed from relatives, family members. It doesn't need to be a close family member. It can't just be some random guy. But if you have an individual that is uh, able to gift you the funds for the down payment and or closing costs, perfectly acceptable with both conventional and FHAs. This does have to be a gift. Um, there are no tax ramifications as far as from your from the person gifting you the money and you receiving the money. They don't have to worry about paying taxes on any of that stuff. This is a great way to utilize uh, you know someone else's funds to help with the down payment if you truly do not have that down payment and or closing costs. Utilize a relative or a family, they can gift you that money. We still have to source this and kind of show where it came from. So before any money gets moved around, always talk to your loan officer first. And a gift is a great way to uh, really just get those funds you need for that down payment. Third option, in the past I've talked about my personal home buying experience. What I did, instead of sacrificing home size, I wasn't willing to do like a condo or a townhouse, I wanted a single family home. So I had to drive a little bit further out in order to find that house that was bigger that I could afford when I was buying my first property. This is something else that you can do if you're willing to drive a little bit further to a more rural location in the rural areas, depending on where you're at, they could qualify for that USDA loan. The USDA loan is a true zero down payment loan. So it is a fantastic option if you don't have that down payment and maybe your price points are a little bit tougher. It's hard to find something in the city, but you're willing to commute to work or maybe you work from home. So it really doesn't matter where you live. Uh, the USDA loan is a fantastic loan. It's one of my favorite ones because again, it's a true zero down. It's available in rural locations. If you want to find out the city that you're looking at or the town you're looking at qualifies for that, check out the USDA eligibility website, which is right here. 
From there, you can plug in the address or the zip code of where you're looking and it'll tell you if it's in a USDA eligible area. Because again, that is a zero down program. You don't need a down payment for it. And guess what? The closing cost can be rolled into the loan on the USDA loan. It's the only loan that can do that on a purchase if the value appraises higher than your purchase price. So let's say you're under contract for 200 and the appraisal comes back at $205,000, we can roll $5,000 of those closing costs right back into the loan and you can truly be no money out of pocket. So great option, USDA loan, if you're willing to go a little bit further out and be in a rural location. Next up, we have veterans. Of course, if you are a veteran and I haven't told enough people about this, then shame on me, but veterans qualify for zero down loans. The VA loan does not have a down payment. It is one of the best options out there. I love our veterans. If you are a veteran, if you know a veteran, zero down if they are eligible for that VA loan, which is a fantastic, fantastic thing. Closing costs still have to be paid separate, so keep in mind you still have to pay closing costs or they can be negotiated within the contract to be paid in part or in full by the seller, but that is not a requirement. And finally, the fifth thing, if you don't have money set aside, Start saving today. Today is the day that you can start putting money away every single month. Take a deep look into your finances. If you don't have someone, or if you don't know how to do this, please utilize me. Utilize. This is not typically a loan officer job, but it's something that I do for my clients. I think it's important that we take a deep dive into your bank statements, into your budget. Maybe let's find where we can put away an extra $1,000 a month or 500 a month or whatever that is. Let's figure that out so we know exactly where you need to be, how much you need to save, Sometimes it's just a simple planning. Maybe you don't need that cup of Starbucks every morning. Maybe you don't need to be you know, going out to eat every single day, stuff like that, guys. So let's really take a look sometimes at that budget and, and are you saving enough money? So again, this is more of a long-term process depending on where you're at and how much you can save. It's a great time to take a look at your finances, figure out if you're making the right choice and if you're saving first. That's another recommendation I have. This is just in general. When you get paid, when your employer pays you, or when you get money in the bank, the first person you should always pay is not your bills, it's not even your mortgage payment, you pay yourself first. You save first, that becomes your nest egg to invest in, ideally in real estate, uh, but in other avenues as well. Budget, save your money, that's one of the one of the other best ways you can utilize those funds for a down payment in a house. So there you have it guys. Those are the five alternatives to down payment assistance. So let's recap. First off you have utilizing money from your 401k, getting a gift from relatives or family, the USDA loan, VA loan, or simply budget. Save your money, put it aside, get yourself some real estate, get into a house. The people that did it two years ago, a year ago, they're happy they did. Now, let's get into the cocktail, right? So this one's fun. My mother, for my birthday, got me a really cool cocktail book made by T-Pain. It was super fun. It's got a ton of great uh, recipes in there. So today I'm using another one of the recipes, uh, slightly tweaked, because you know I always gotta put my own little spin on it. This cocktail is called, All I Do Is Win. Winners win. I had somebody told me that quote the other day, and that really is what it comes down to. If you want to accomplish something, you gotta sit out and do it. So I know we've been talking about down payment assistance. If you truly don't have money and the assistance programs are away, I've shared with you my ways I think you can make it happen. There could be other ways, but the bottom line is find a way to win. And that's what this cocktail is called today. All I do is win. It's another bourbon cocktail, but this one's shaken. Um, and this one's kind of fun because it's kind of a mix between like an old fashioned and like a spritzer or like a mojito. It's like a mojito mixed with an old fashioned almost. So you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's make some drinks. We got, whoop, we got the cocktails. We got the blah, blah. I don't know what I'm doing. We start with bourbon. Again, one of my favorites, Elijah Craig. I think it's one of the best bourbons out there. It's good straight up, good mix. So a huge fan. We're gonna start with one and a half ounces of Elijah Craig bourbon. Get that into the shaker. And this is where this one gets a little bit different. So we're actually gonna take some orange slices and some lemon slices, and we're gonna throw the whole thing in there. Here we get our orange. So I'm just gonna take my orange slice, throw it in there. Now we're gonna take a lemon slice and do the same thing. And you're just gonna throw the full orange peel in there. So orange peel, lemon peel, the whole thing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some fresh mint. This is actually from my garden. My my wife has been really into making, like, you know, growing her own stuff in the backyard, my wife and daughter. And so this is our own fresh mint from my backyard. Oh, that's good stuff. So we're gonna just toss that whole thing in there. And then we're gonna get a half ounce of simple syrup, a little bit of sweetness in there. 
I'm using a little less than, less than a half ounce because I'm not, I don't like my drink super sweet. We're going to throw some Angostura bitters in there as well. About three dashes of those. We're going to muddle this. So a muddle is basically means we're just going to smash the hell out of it. So we're going to get in here, we're going to smash these lemons and oranges, the mint, the whiskey, the bourbon, simple syrup, all of it melded in there, just slushing it up. Get all those flavors combined. Especially with mint. If you muddle mint, it really brings out the flavor. All right, that's good enough. Now we're gonna add, add ice to this bad boy. Real quick, before we do that, so this is my spin on it. Another birthday present for me. My wife got me this cool, it's got all different types of wood on it and it's made for smoking cocktails. So this one's a little bit different than the smoker you've seen me use before. What we're gonna do is we're gonna torch the wood and then you set the glass on top just to kind of let the smoke infuse into the glass. So we're gonna do some oak because that is what most whiskey is made out of is oak. Just burn a little spot in it right here until it catches fire. And then put that right over the top and let that smoke infuse in that glass. And it's not gonna be a ton, but it's gonna give it a little bit of a smoky flavor. We are going to mix up our whiskey drink. All right, you want that nice and cold? Shook it extra long. Now remember, this one has all of our macerated oranges and lemons in there, so we're gonna have to make sure we strain this bad boy real good. But first, I gotta get some ice in my smoky glass. Oh yeah, that's what's up. Okay, so we have our ice. We have our strainer, and we're gonna strain this twice, actually. So, we take this strainer and this one. It's gonna make sure we don't get any of that extra orange and lemon excess in there. And you'll notice this will not fill the glass all the way up. Don't worry, it's on purpose, because we're gonna to top this with a little bit of soda water. I prefer to top it with alcoholic soda water, so it recommends just club soda. You can throw whatever on here, but this is a lime uh, seltzer, actually local. This is from uh, Fork Peaks Brewery. This is their lime seltzer. So we're just gonna top it with that. Oh yeah, that's what's up. And then of course, garnish with a mint sprig. And there it is, you guys. The All I Do Is Win. <laughs> <laughs> now I got that song stuck in my head. So there it is guys. These are the alternatives to uh, down payment assistance as well as a fantastic, fantastic whiskey cocktail you can enjoy on a summer day or really just any time. So cheers and have a great rest of the day guys.